everyone. Welcome to the channel DevOps Tech Stack. I hope you all are doing safe and sound. Today we are continuing with the day 10 session of the DevOps Bootcamp series. So in the last video, we already discussed a few of the Linux file system. There we discussed what is the slash home directory, then bin directory, then user, sorry, then USR directory, then the ETC directory, then we have op directory for the optional uh, files, then we have snap, then we have the libraries directory. So all these Linux file system we discussed in our last lectures. If you haven't gone through that yet, please do watch that previous video. I will share the link in the description. So today we will continue with the rest of the file system and we will try to cover all those file systems in the today lectures. So the very first thing is slash var directory. What is slash var directory? Var stands for variables. Actually this directory contains variable like data, like system logging files or mail or printer spool directories and transient and temporary files. So whenever you will see any log related to like your application is down and you want to see the logs, most of those logs will be placed under the var directory because it is like the temporary files are all stored over there. And after some days, those files are automatically get cleaned up. These are the typically files and directories that are expected to grow in size. For example, slash var slash crash holds information about every time a process has crashed or var log has all the logs file for your computer and its applications which grow constantly with the time so if you see any issue related to the system or any issue related to database or any issue related to the application if the application is crashing all those type of log you can see under this var directory let's get into the terminal and we will go inside this var directory so this is my current directory that is slash inside this we have all these directory so currently we are discussing about the var directory so let's get inside that cd slash var do ls over here you will see these many directories over there so the main directory is this log inside this log directory you will see most of the log files placed over here if any of the issue you get in the application or system like if any process is crashed all those details you can see over here okay the next directory or the next file system is slash media this is where your os automatically mount your external removable devices such as usb thumb drive or pen drive those things if you insert in your system so it will automatically the os will automatically mount your external devices in this particular directory and then the next is the mnt so MNT is like there you want external devices manually to mount like it can be a floppy disk or it can be external hard drives or network drive all those things if you want to manually mount onto your Linux system then slash MNT is the point of contact and there you will mount it manually. So overall slash media and slash MNT are basically the same however it is recommended to use slash MNT for manual mounting and leave media directory for the operating system itself. The next is the slash boot. Here you will find all the bootloader files. It contains the static bootloader, kernel executable and the configuration files required to boot a computer. Like first time if you create a virtual machine or a, your system is boot up for the first time, all those configuration files will be put up into the slash boot directory and your system will recognize or read that particular directory to boot your system back to the terminal and we will see what is there inside this slash boot directory currently we are in which directory we are inside this slash var. let's get back one level back and now from here we will go to what is that boot directory here do ls is used to list all the files in this particular directory don't worry in the my next lecture i will cover all the basic commands of the linux as well but i'm trying to cover here also so that you we all can be on the same page so here you will see these many files or these many directories or these many images maybe so all these are the files which are related for the first time if system is booting up all these configuration it will take and system will start or up and running okay so this is all the files which are getting called whenever you start your computer like your machine is first time now if I shut down this particular machine and start it again. So the very first thing or very first file it will read is this boot directory. Okay fine. Now next is 
slash sys directory. What is sys for the system? This is where you can interact with the kernel. In other words, you can consider it as the interface of the kernel. This directory is a virtual file system, which means the file lives on a memory and disappear after the shutdown. Slash sys allows you to get information about the system and its components in a structured way. Moreover, also we will get into detail of all these directories going forward in our sessions. If we need any of these directories to learn in some detail, we will go through it. But for now, it is just a quick glimpse of all the uh, file systems which we need to know what exists in the Linux file system. And most important, like we normally use the slash var or we use that uh, slash var for the uh, checking the log files. So these are few of the important directories which you need to know. Uh, or MNT is for mounting the external drives that if we want to mount any external device, then in that case, we want to use like, for example, if uh, some application is running on a particular machine and there you are getting issue like uh, your storage disk is uh, already almost about to fill, then you need to mount an external device or extra, extra space you need to add in that particular node, then you will manually mount the devices in the slash MNT. So if we do those kind of lab exercises, definitely we will get into detail, more detail of these particular file systems. Then the next is slash dev directory. These files allow application programs to interact with the hardware devices. Okay, these special files can either be the character or block files. A block device is any device which performs data input in output in the units of blocks, example hard disk, whereas character device is a device which performs data input or output in units of characters such as a standard input or output that is keyboard and a screen. Okay. Now the next important directory or file system is the slash proc. What is there inside this? Slash proc stands for the process. On this directory, you can find the pseudo files containing information about system processes and the resources. For example, every process on your computer would have a folder with information about that process on this directory. This directory is a virtual file system and disappears once the computer is shut down. Okay. Let's get into this particular directory. So these are few of the important directories actually. So I'm showing in the terminal also. So whatever command you are running in this terminal, all will execute in term of a process. So every time you run an application or execute some script, everything will be running as a process. So once you got the process ID, so it will accordingly create a directory with that process ID. In short, if you run any script or any command in the terminal, it will give you a process ID and with that process ID, it will create the directory in this particular proc file system. And if your machine is shut down, means all the processes are uh, stopped, then this all directory will be automatically deleted. As of now, you don't know that how to see all the processes running in the Linux file system that I will show in the next lectures. So you will see that you will, there you will get a process ID and with that process ID, you can see the directory created over here. So this will reside under the proc directory. Now we have run directory. Modern Linux distributions have included this directory as a temporary file system, which stores RAM runtime data. This means that demons like system ED, which are started every early in the boot process and perhaps before var run was available, have a standardized file system location available where they can store the runtime information. Okay, so it is like a temporary file system, nothing else. It stores the RAM runtime data. Every time your system is boot up, so all those uh, informations are stored in this slash run directory. The next is the slash TMP. This is where the applications store the temporary files they need during a session. For example, when you are writing a Word document in a Word processor, it stores a temporary file saving all your write. If for some reason your system crashes before saving the file, the Word processor can search this directory to find a recent saved copy to recover your text. This directory is usually empty when you reboot your system. Next, we have two more file system that is slash SRV. SRV is a service directory. If you are running a web server, you can store the site specific data on this folder. And the next is CD-ROM, which we less frequently only use. This is a legacy directory to mount CD-ROM. These we are not using that much. So overall, I will tell most of the few directories which are quite important is for the first one is slash home, then slash pin is also important, then USR is important, then ETC because all the configurations are placed over here. Then libraries and all we don't deal much because here only the system related libraries files are placed over here that supports the 
slash bin directory. After that, we have slash var, slash mnt, slash boot, then slash proc is the important one. Then we have TMP is also like a temporary file that is also good to know. And then we have a slash root directory that is a for super user. All the administrator related files are placed over here. We can go inside, sorry, uh, I think, sorry, I missed this particular file system. We will go inside this particular directory that is slash root, cd slash root. Permission is denied because currently I am logged in as a EC2 hyphen user. Then we need to first switch to the root user. Now we are logged in with a root user. Let's get first see what's the current directory slash root. Let's, so this only directory we were talking, right? So that is slash root. So slash root is like the home directory for the root user. Do ls over here. Currently nothing is there, but if admin want to store some file over here, they can store in this particular home directory. It is kind of home directory for a home directory for this particular user. So I hope now you have a clear cut idea on the overall Linux file system, how it looks like. In the next lectures, we will deep dive into the Linux commands or the shell commands, which we need to know. Also, a good news is that we are going to soon start the shell scripting playlist also over this channel. So if you some, so the people who are already aware of the commands, Linux commands, which we mostly use, so they can directly jump into that part as well. But here I will continue with first uh, explaining you a few of the Linux command which we use quite frequently or which we need to know as a DevOps engineer. Thank you for watching our videos. Please do like, share and subscribe to the DevOps Tech Stack channel for some more such videos.